Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a video that is all about Plutarch. And so hopefully this will be the first in many videos. That's what I'm hoping about ancient literature that I'm going to be making this year. As I read or reread ancient literature, I really wanted this year to make a dedicated video for each book that I finished. And so the first ancient classic that I read here in 2023 was Plutarch's Lives. And I did not read this in its entirety. Uh, and in fact, I think I probably have read it in its entirety, but it's been piecemeal over the years. Plutarch was an ancient Roman historian and he has always been the Roman historian that I have favored and that I think I would say is my favorite. Uh, and so Plutarch lived from around the 40s AD to 119 AD. Plutarch lived through some very interesting years. He lived through Nero, he lived through Hadrian and Trajan, and he wrote quite a bit. He is a very prolific author, and we have quite a bit that he wrote. Unfortunately, there is a lot that he wrote that did not survive, as is the case with most ancient writers. Uh, and so there are several things of Plutarch's that haven't made it into the modern day. But Plutarch is most known uh, for something called the Parallel Lives. And this is what I read. This was the first uh, ancient classic that I read this year. I read a selection of eight Roman lives by Plutarch uh, in an edition that was published by Oxford. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but the Parallel Lives are a series of biographies that Plutarch wrote where he paired ancient Greek and ancient Roman historical figures together so that he could write a biography of each. So his setup is you would read a biography of a Greek figure and then a biography of a Roman figure. And they were always paired off based on uh, maybe moral grounds, political grounds, maybe they occupied kind of the same strata in society. It's really interesting to see the figures that he paired together. The parallel lives today though, are nearly always published separately. They tend to be published as a selection of Roman lives like I read, or a selection of Greek lives like this, nine Greek lives. The reason being that during the time that Plutarch is living, uh, the Romans that he's talking about are essentially contemporary figures. And so he is assuming a level of knowledge about them on your behalf as the reader. And so the Greek figures are actually the real historical figures that he's discussing in the parallel lives. To us in the modern day, the Greeks and the Romans are both figures from antiquity. And so in the modern day, it is structured as Greek lives or Roman lives, essentially because I think they assume you were interested in one time period or the other. Uh, but that's not really what Plutarch wanted from the parallel lives. And I've always found that kind of frustrating that that's the way that modern publishers choose to divvy up the works, because clearly you were meant to be having a conversation about the two figures that he paired. So I know people will ask what my personal recommendation is for an edition of Plutarch. Plutarch, I think you want the Modern Library Edition, which does publish the Parallel Lives in full in two volumes, and it leaves them intact as a Greek life, a Roman life, a Greek life, a Roman life. I think that preserves the integrity of what Plutarch wanted, uh, and I think it's also just in general a great edition because the Modern Library does some fantastic notes and introductions in my opinion, uh, so that is the one I would recommend if you want to go all in. But there's really nothing wrong, in my opinion either, with sticking with these small collections of just Greek lives or Roman lives, especially if you know you're interested in one time period over another. So an addition that I think is really great and I think would be a benefit uh, is Plutarch's edition that exists in Penguin that is essentially all of his lives uh, where he wrote biographies of men who participated in Caesar's civil war and kind of the fall of the Republic. And I think that's interesting because that means you're getting varying perspectives on the same event. And so that leads me into why I love Plutarch, why Plutarch is my favorite ancient historian. Uh, Plutarch is essentially kind of crafting the biography as we know it, uh, and maybe not specifically the biography as a genre, but the biography as something that is very personal uh, and not just dry facts. Plutarch always takes the side of the person that he is writing about. And so he always writes a biography from that person's perspective. And I think that's really refreshing and I love it because it means that in something like this Penguin edition uh, where you can read 
all of the biographies of all of the people who were involved in Caesar's Civil War and the fall of the Republic, it means you're getting a different perspective on the same event multiple times, uh, which might sound kind of boring and kind of tedious, but Plutarch is going to explain it to you in a different way each time based on if it's Antony, um, if it is Caesar, if it is Brutus. And so I think that's what's really fantastic about Plutarch. Plutarch is a very personal historian and he is really interested in the people that he's writing about. As I always say, ancient histories are not as married to fact as a modern nonfiction would be. But even in modern nonfiction, you often find that the historian who is writing this has a vested interest in the person that they're writing about. They're really fascinated by them. They have positive feelings towards them. And really, why would you write a biography of someone that you weren't into in some way? And so what I really respect about Plutarch is that he puts that on the page. And one of the quotes by him that I just really love is that he talks about spending time with these men as he writes their biography. And that's just something that really gets the history geek in me because that's the way I feel when I read a biography or when I read a classic, when I read nonfiction even, I feel like I am spending time with that person. Uh, and so I just really appreciate Plutarch's attitude towards history because he really does like to sit with a person for a little while before writing about them, it seems. It seems to me like he really gave them time and he sat with them a little bit to try to get into their headspace before writing their biography. And saying a biography, maybe you're thinking these are gonna be really long. They're really not, they are not. Uh, and so that's one thing that's really great. You can hammer out several of these in one day, but at the same time, it does feel like something that you don't really wanna read straight through, if that makes sense. Because when each biography finishes, it's not as if it automatically leads into the next person. Of course, we do have the Greek and Roman pairs and they're designed to be read together, but they don't automatically fold over timeline-wise into the next set of biographies. And so I always feel like when I finish one of these biographies that I can sit him down for a little while and then I often never come back because it often feels like you kind of closed the door on him. But it's also really great because it means you get a lot of information very rapidly. One thing that I really enjoyed about this Oxford edition that I recently read uh, was that the person who wrote the introduction and gave us the notes for this edition would also give us a mini introduction at the start of each biography and tell us uh, who the Greek was that this person was paired with. And he would also kind of summarize the life of the person before we read Plutarch's biography. That is a piece of advice I would give you that I don't think is necessarily just tied to Plutarch. Uh, I think this is in general, when you are going into the ancient histories, I think you need to get a little bit of a background knowledge of what they're talking about before you sit down to read them. By background knowledge, I mean look up Wikipedia. Just get a bullet point of events because of course these can be read as straightforward history. They were for centuries. Plutarch's lives were incredibly, incredibly popular and that's why so many of them survive into the modern day. And so this can certainly be your gateway into a certain historical figure. But there are a lot of biases present in ancient histories. Uh, and also ancient histories are not nearly as married to fact, as I said. Uh, and so a lot of times they will have dialogue included. There will be speeches that are clearly just written by the historian uh, that you can't verify word for word that this historical figure actually said that. Uh, and so I think it's helpful to you to go into a lot of these ancient histories with just a small background knowledge, a small summary of what they are going to be talking about. Uh, because it's not really gonna steal the joy from reading them for the first time. A lot of the ancient historians are just a joy to read because they're fun. Plutarch to me is maybe less fun and less gossipy than someone like Suetonius. Suetonius is funny and Suetonius is really laughing at you, but Plutarch really feels quite serious, but Plutarch feels very respectful, not just of the figures that he's writing about, but also of you as the reader. Uh, and maybe you want to take away something from this in an interesting way. I really, really love Plutarch, and I just really love his attitude towards writing histories. 
Plutarch is also interesting when you're talking about him, comparing him, uh, maybe not just to his contemporaries, but to other ancient historians, such as Suetonius. Suetonius was writing most famously the lives of the Caesars. Uh, and so he is talking about the royal family, let's call it, the imperial family. So you would think there is a little bit of political tiptoeing that needs to happen for somebody like Suetonius. That's also true of Plutarch, but Plutarch specifically gets to play with these Greek lives because Plutarch is of Greek background, and also the Greeks are far enough away in history that he can really tell you stuff straight. Going hand in hand with the advice to read about the historical figures or about the historical events that are going to be discussed in an ancient history before you read it, I think it would also behoove you to learn a little bit about the historian themselves and kind of the historic context in which they are writing. Uh, Plutarch's is maybe not quite as interesting as some other figures, but Plutarch is also writing under Roman rule. And in many ways, the parallel lives kind of glorify uh, the fall of the Republic and the entry of the empire, of course, because at the time in which he's writing, the empire is at its height. In terms of prose style, I would say Plutarch is maybe not as beautifully written as some other historians. I think Tacitus kind of shows off a little bit in a way that I like. Plutarch is very much trying to give you the facts, but he's also trying to give you a perspective on somebody in an interesting way and allow you to get to know them personally. So there are often little personal details throughout his lives that I really appreciate reading, talking about people uh, in their home life, not just what they were doing politically or on the field of battle that I really love. What I also really love is that Plutarch clearly believed Cleopatra and Antony were a love match. The way he writes Antony's life is so incredible. That's easily my favorite of the lives is his life of Antony. And he often mentions stuff that has gone on into pop culture in an interesting way. He talks about the asp uh, in kind of the basket of fruit that Cleopatra kills herself with. I think he also mentions Cleopatra rolling herself up in the carpet to be delivered to Caesar. And some of these are big rumors uh, that we have known about Cleopatra for centuries, probably because a lot of Egyptian material on her was lost or was never recorded accurately because of what went down in her lifetime and how she came to an end. So Plutarch is a really valuable source. Can you call Plutarch a primary source? is probably the better question because he is discussing people who are historic figures, even if they are a little bit more contemporary. Antony died long, long before Plutarch was born, but he is one of the few accounts we have surviving. So a lot of people will take Plutarch at his word. A lot of people won't. Uh, and so that's an interesting conversation to have. And something interesting to ask yourself is whether you believe a lot of what he tells you. Uh, and this, of course, can go for all of the ancient historians. Take it with a grain of salt. See whether you really believe this happened or if this is really, truly outrageous. I personally think Plutarch is nuanced and is very truthful and blunt in other lives. And so I kind of take what he says about people like Brutus, Caesar, and Antony. I take it as truth because I feel like he wrote the other lives uh, in such a truthful manner. But again, that could be all perception. So that's kind of an interesting conversation to have when you're reading an ancient history. There are 48 lives that are paired together. I believe a few of these lives have been lost, sadly. But for the most part, they still exist today because they were incredibly popular at the time in which they were written, and they have been popular throughout the centuries. That's why they have never been lost. Plutarch has essentially never been out of print, let's say, uh, because he was popular even during the medieval period when a lot of ancient literature uh, was not or just wasn't known about. Plutarch remained fairly popular, and he was a great source of learning. So I think you can enter Plutarch uh, with no background knowledge of some of these figures. I definitely have before. There are many of the Greek figures that I know nothing about, uh, and so reading his biography of them was my first exposure to them, and so I found a lot of interesting people that way. And sometimes you look up Wikipedia articles on these people, nine times out of ten, they'll tell you Plutarch said this about so-and-so. So Plutarch remains a very important source and a very important historian. If you are interested in ancient classics, I think he is a wonderful historian to start with because he's very readable and he's very quick. <laughs> these biographies are not 
30 pages long. He really gets his point across very quickly, which I think makes him ideal for a beginner to the ancient world. He is an ancient historian that I've always been very partial to. And so I really enjoy him. I'm glad that I started the year off with him. So that was a very quick video about Plutarch. I really hope that you are encouraged to try him because I think he's very approachable and I think he's very readable. I would love to know down below if you have read Plutarch, if you have a favorite of the Parallel Lives, if you have read other works by him because I don't know that I have. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.